thank you all very much for coming. I appreciate it. I know you just had lunch and some of you may fall into a sleep. Yes. And that's fine. <laughs> I will not call you out unless you're Cody Landefeld, and then I will call you out. Um, okay, so we are talking about speeding up production. And uh, just for anyone, I've had a few questions. Uh, there's not going to be any code or anything going on. It's just concepts and apps that I use. So it'll be two parts. Um, a lot of it's just going to be, again, the things that I do to help me govern my day and make sure I'm on track and everything. And then the second half will be all the apps and subscriptions and code and who knows what else that I use to make all those things happen. All right. Oh, also, uh, my slides will not be available after this and not for any malicious purpose. Because my slides are the best and I'm not sharing them. <laughs> it's not that at all. Um, <laughs> I would made a blog post, which is the link at the top, uh, jzen.us slash WordCampLAX15. And pretty much everything we're going to talk about is listed there. All the links are there. Anything that's in the slide plus a lot more is there. So it's a much better way to get this information again if you need it. I have one question in the back. Where are your slides at? <laughs> <laughs> they're, at uh, they're at your mom's. <laughs> Two minutes in, and we have a your mom joke already. <laughs> uh, we'll see how long we get to a that's what she said. Hopefully we can make it the whole way. It's not really appropriate. Safety okay. Officer. Sorry? I said safety officer. That's right. I know. We've already gone too far. It's making me sweat like I'm eating a lot of ketchup, which makes my brow sweat in particular. I don't know why. Has anybody else experienced that? Brow sweat from ketchup? <laughs> Is it just me? Okay. I'm fine with that. It's okay if it's just me. All right, so uh, most of us are in the, I know I'm switching gears horribly now. Most of us work in the WordPress world, and just out of curiosity, how many people here are entrepreneurs or freelancers? Most of us, I know, me too. Okay, uh, once a lot of us kind of jumped ship on some other steady paying job, and we thought we're going to do this and this is going to be better or different or I don't know, we're seeking something else in life, and now we're all here at this WordCamp, which is fantastic. <laughs> The thing that a lot of people find once they leave a steady paying job and start moving towards freelancing or entrepreneurship is that suddenly all your time is your own and you're responsible for everything, which on the one, you know, has some pros and has some cons. But one thing, and I've always had a problem with this, is that you kind of always feel like you need to be working. Like I could, I'm sitting here watching TV, I could be making money right now and you start feeling guilty about it. So. At a certain point, that guilt got to me too much, and I started looking for ways to speed it, make, make, make my work faster so I didn't feel guilty, so I could get done what I felt I needed to get done in my eight or 10 hours or 12 hours or however much I was gonna work. Hopefully six or four, you know, you wanna work a lot less. But if you can pack a lot more into a little time, then you don't feel quite as guilty at the end of the day, because I did, I got done what I wanted to get done. Oh, hang on. Just in case you're curious, by the way, we're in the introduction right now. Um, the point of the quote that's up there uh, is really that there's nothing wrong with wasting time. Uh, just make sure you're wasting it on what you want and not wasting it on work. So if I could tell you I have a magic wand and you can work four hours a day but get eight hours of work done, I don't think there's anyone who's in like, no, Harry Potter, beat it. I don't want your weird witchcraft. You're like, yeah, I'm into that. Let's, let's do that and then we can go to the beach and get some burgers. Or a tofu burger if you're a vegetarian. Yeah. So productivity. Um, a lot of what uh, I'm going to share and show are things I've either picked up from reading or I've picked up from friends. So those are my two big sources. Um, maybe you have other places, but Friends, obviously, those are your friends. Those are resources. Use them appropriately. The reading part, in particular, I use something called Flipboard. Is anybody, are there Flipboard fans? Yeah. OK, so if you're not familiar with it, essentially it's just a, it's like a, an aggregator of blog posts and articles and whatnot on particular topics. And you can pick a bunch of topics. So I'm into soccer, and I'm into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm into National Geographic, and I'm revealing too much about myself right now. <laughs> um, one of the flip boards that I follow, and I think they're called boards, I could be wrong, is a productivity one. And there's a ton of articles in there, and there's going to be a lot. 
You'll find there's a lot in there that's repetitive and you'll find a lot that doesn't make sense for you. The point is to try and expose yourself to some new ideas and when something does make sense, try it out. If it works, start incorporating that into your workflow. If it doesn't, kick it to the curb, try something else. Um, okay, and everything we're gonna talk about, as I mentioned before, this is all stuff that works for me. Everybody's different. If what I'm saying makes sense, give it a try. If you want to try a modified version of it, that's totally okay too. This is all very, this is all open source ideas that are available on my blog. Um, or you can reject everything and that's fine too. At least then you know like, yeah, that doesn't work for me, but this works. Okay. Section one, the tips. Oh, we should probably call this techniques. These are the things that I do uh, almost every day. So number one, you have to set your goals. So we need to find a way to know if we're actually being productive or not. And if you go into your work day and just say, you kind of go take two seconds to go, okay, I, I, I was working on this thing yesterday and I need to start working on this other thing today. When you're done, you've gotten a couple phone calls, a couple emails, things have shifted. You look back and you kind of think, ah, I feel like I was kind of successful, maybe, I don't know. But you have no way to check if you were actually productive or not. So. When you're making your list, number one, be realistic about it. And that, that's to say, don't, don't overdo your list. Like, here's, here's all the things I need to get done. And you know you can't do that in a day, so don't make that your list. That's just gonna set you up for failure and frustration because you checked off two out of 10 things. Be very realistic. I know in a day I can get these two things on, done. And I generally like to give myself one extra, I call it the bonus item that if I get to that, it's been a great day. But what I don't want to have happen is finish the two or three things or whatever I've set up for myself for the day and then have an hour. Like I've got an hour free and then I don't know what to do because then it becomes a wasted hour. But not necessarily, I can go to the movies or I can do whatever I want. Um, but it's a lot cooler if you can make money. Give me one second, please. A slight intermission. We're back, okay. Um, uh, and with the list, uh, don't limit yourself to one if you don't want to. You can have a list for the week and a list for the month, so you can have some high-level goals. But again, every day, give yourself, like, here's what I want to get done today. Two, be flexible, sort of, with this. Okay, and what that means is don't go through your day and let all the loudest voices govern what you're working on. So you started working on project one. Somebody called you like, this thing's broken, it needs to be fixed right now. So, okay, project one out of the way, I'm gonna work on this for a while, you get distracted for two hours, okay, I'm gonna go back to project one now. You get an email, like, can you fix this one thing real quick? Yeah, that'll only take me 15 minutes, let me do that real quick before I get back to project one. By the time, that I'm seeing some nodding, by the time the day is over, project one did not get anywhere near finished where you thought it was going to. And you go into the next day, kind of where you started that same day. Yes, things got done, but were you necessarily productive? I don't know, that's up for you to decide. So. Be, f yeah, be flexible, like life's gonna happen, you're gonna roll with it, but most emergencies aren't actually emergencies, and if you ask a client, like when they say, hey, uh, this is an emergency, this needs to be done right now, and you say, cool, happy to do it, you do have to pay the premium rate because it's an emergency, and they go, that can wait till tomorrow, mm -hmm. it's not an emergency anymore, they just wanted to get it done, and I get that, but at the same time, you set up these goals for yourself, you kind of mentally set yourself, like this is what I'm gonna do today, stick with that uh, within reason. Third, assess, which I'm really hoping that I spelled correctly. Um, I looked at it a lot and it keeps looking wrong to me, but I think I got it right. Okay, so when your day is done, look at your list. What did you get done? And there's nothing wrong with not hitting your mark, you know? Enjoy the successes, like yay, you know, celebrate. I'm gonna have a sip of, a, I'm gonna get a shake from in and out on my drive home, because I did pretty well today. If you have some failures, failures, that's fine. Just learn from them and then they're not failures anymore. They were learning lessons. So why didn't I get this done? Oh, it's because I let this email distract me and then I ran with that for too long and I should have just said, okay, that's a thing for tomorrow and then incorporate that in my list for the next day. Um, and plan, this one's kind of optional. This one's up to you. Some people like this, some people don't. I personally do. When you finish your day, you are in the perfect position to kind of start planning your next day because you know exactly where you left off. Like, everything's so fresh, you don't have to, you haven't slept, you haven't eaten dinner yet. Um, you've kind of forgotten the little details that matter. Uh, so I do like to write up a list. Like this is what I think I'm gonna do tomorrow. When I come in the next day, you may change it, but at least you had a good starting point and you didn't forget anything that you were 
because you can leave work and say, oh, I won't forget that. And then you get there the next morning, like, oh, what was that thing again? I forgot and I didn't write it down. So set goals, make a list. Another thing, you got to reduce those distractions. Distractions are just like the worst killers of productivity. Um, there was an article uh, Brandon pointed out to me. Brandon's my business partner at Pixel Jar, and he's handsomely sitting in that corner over there. Let's all look at him just real quick. <laughs> Excellent. OK. Um, the article said that when you were in the zone or the flow or whatever you like to call it, as soon as you get distracted, it can take you up to 15 minutes to get back to that point where you were. And a distraction could be the smallest thing. And it doesn't even take, it takes a moment. And that's your, your phone buzzing. That's uh, a growl coming up that someone texted you. Or you notice that your, your inbox went up from 2 to 5, something like that. And again, you, you move your eyes, and then everything in your brain shifts. Like, oh, because you have to reassess. Is that a thing I need to take care of right now? I should probably look at that. And then gone. You were, you were jamming. You were working twice as fast as usual. And now you're going to get it by 15 minutes back up to that speed again. Two minutes into that flow, you get distracted again, and you could get into this horrible cycle. So uh, two reduced distractions, a couple things. First is planning. This means treating your production time like a meeting. So for these two hours, I'm going to work, and that's the only thing I'm going to do for these two hours. I'm not scheduling any other meetings. I'm not taking any phone calls. And whatever your, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be two hours. It could be what your, what your length of time is, like maybe you're only good for 90 minutes or an hour or whatever you like to do. But again, plan to be successful. Um, obviously, eliminate those alerts. If you are OCD, this means turning off your email, turning off your phone, turning off, putting on headphones, getting Spotify. And they have lots of cool uh, moods and genre playlists to help you concentrate and get in the zone. I feel like I'm ignoring this corner. I apologize. I'm going to start looking this way too now. Not you in particular. I don't want you to feel like I'm zoning in on you, but you are very handsome. So uh, the, the podium makes me, maybe it's being right-handed. I don't know what's going on, but OK. It is. It's a weird angle, right? OK. I'm being distracted right now. I apologize. That was not part of the presentation. Um, but we're having fun. That's what we're here for. It's Saturday. I'm not working right now. Or am I? So anyway. Whatever, is, whatever can distract you, really cut that out. And that's not like, uh, like, well, I can leave my email on, but I'm just not going to look at it. Like, really, shut down the Gmail tab. I see, I see snickering, like, oh, I know I've done that. I've done that, too. Also, going back to making lists, do not, do not use your inbox as your to-do list. <laughs> that does not work. It doesn't count. That is super counterproductive, and you can read a million articles on that. You can keep your inbox full of things, of things that you need to remember, like this is a, a bit of code I need to inject, or there's an image in here that I need to add to this website. That's fine. Again, just don't use it as your to-do list. Keep your to-do list somewhere else. It's called an inbox, not a to-do list. Um, OK, also remember to rest. So um, again, everyone in here seems to be a freelancer or an entrepreneur, so I know we've all been in the position where a project needs to get done by tomorrow. So we go, OK, we're, we're not sleeping tonight. And we're just going to keep working. And you do, and you watch the sun go down, and you watch the sun come up, and you haven't eaten, and you're bleary-eyed, and you're thinking, oh, I just got to get this thing done. What's happening, though, is you're not really getting anything done. If you haven't slept, the, the amount of work you can get done in four hours is not nearly as much work as you can get done if you slept for 20, 30, 40 minutes and started again and worked for an hour. So your brain, like everything else, is just a muscle. It needs to relax. Like if you went to the gym and I said, you need to do 100 pull-ups, you're not going to go, I'm going to do those all at once. No problem. Because we're um, WordPress people and generally not as fit as we should be. <laughs> so we're going to do five at a time, maybe, and rest in between. Same thing. If you're good at coding, again, for 90 minutes or two hours, do the 90 minutes or two hours. Get up out of your chair. Go get some water. Make some coffee. Do something. Let your brain breathe and relax. All right. We're doing good. Automate repetition. There are no bullet points for this one. I apologize. This one's much more an abstract thing. Um, again, we're speeding up production. So if you notice, just have to be kind of aware of you know, make sure I'm aware of things you find yourself doing over and over again that may even take a long time. And I'll give you a little example here. It's a tiny little thing, but 
when I'm committing code to my repository, uh, we use SAS and we compile JavaScripts and stuff like that. And we generally do not commit those compiled files until the very end because it just creates a horrible conflict all the time and it's something you don't want to fight with. So if you're committing code, committing code, committing code, and finally I'm ready to commit all the uh, recompiled stuff. And when I do that, my commit message is almost always recompiling scripts and styles. And I have a lot of trouble spelling recompiling, so I find myself typing, erasing, typing, erasing. I also have OCD and I'm not gonna spell it wrong. I just can't allow that. That'll be the thing that will distract me. But, so I spend maybe 10 seconds typing this out, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm doing this seven, eight, nine, a dozen times over a day. So we're talking about a couple minutes now, and then you compile it over a week and over a year. How much time do I spend writing this dumb, it's not dumb, it's important, this little sentence out. So what I did was I created a little, like a keyboard hotkey. When I, when I click this and this, it just writes that out for me. Again, just automating a quick little thing, but starting to save me time. It also uh, keeps me in the zone and in the flow. It's not, I didn't have to stop thinking, how do I spell recompile again, or recompiling, because it's a gerund and it's important to get the ing in there. Um, and again, it's the thing that distracts you, your brain starts working on that instead of something else, and now I can just do hotkey and then be on my way. Anything like that. Um, well, actually, it kind of brings us to our next point, which does have bullet points. Use keyboard shortcuts. This is huge. Uh, if you have not started this yet, I immediately invite you to start as soon as I'm done talking. Otherwise, it's rude. Don't start now. No, you can start now. I don't care. Um, there are hotkeys for everything, and with most applications, the programmers are actually very thoughtful about what keys do what. It's actually, you'll be surprised how how much thought they put into like what, what command should be on the left hand, what hand, command should be on the right hand, should the letters correspond to what the command is, stuff like that. Um, these are things, uh, so I use Sublime Text a lot for my development, um, and there's a million things in there, and the one thing I'll tell anyone who's using Gmail over the, the web application, there is no reason to use the mouse when you're in Gmail. You can do everything without touching the mouse. Okay, and the reason this is important uh, I read this in an article too, in my productivity flipboard thing. Going to the mouse, it takes about two seconds. So you, you waste, you didn't waste, you, t you decided to take two seconds to go to the mouse instead of using keyboard command. That's a choice you made as a person. Um, <laughs> based on the average amount of times someone goes to the mouse, that amounts to about two minutes every day, which <laughs> Extrapolate that over a year, and you're talking about eight days a year. You spend eight days. Imagine, imagine if I sat you all down right now. I didn't realize this was gonna be funny, it's just a stat. But imagine, imagine I sat you all around right now, and I said, I need you to go to the mouse and back to your keyboard for eight days. I'll be back next Monday, not this coming Monday, next Monday, right? And I'll bring you a Snickers bar or something. And we're gonna do this once a year. You're like, I don't think so, that's insane. It is insane, let's not waste eight days doing that. Imagine if I, or if I told you, um, you could work as much as, you can get as much work done this year as you did last year, except you can also take an eight day vacation. Eight working days, so it doesn't include the weekend, so maybe it's kind of a 10 day vacation, very nice. And you made as much money as you did last year. Like, again, I don't think anyone's gonna tell me no. Um, so the trick with this is, uh, what did I write? Recognizing patterns. So once you realize, be not so much again that you're distracting yourself, but be very aware of what you're doing on the keyboard and the mouse. Watch every time you go to the mouse and you start thinking like, geez, I'm going to a lot. Just, and again, in Gmail examples, I went to the mouse every time I wanted to move something into one of my, what do they call them, folders, labels, right? But instead, you can press V and then type in the label you want to go to and enter and not go to the mouse. And you do that for, I don't know, 15, 20 emails every day. And then I want to compose an email. Well, there's a keyboard command for that too. And in Sublime, I noticed I was going to the mouse every time I wanted to uh, get the cursor to the end of the line. There's a keyboard command for that. Again, these little things, but you do them so many times. Uh, the trick with this, bullet point number two, is retention. Okay, so yes, there's a lot of keyboard commands out there, but if you don't remember them, they're worthless to you. <laughs> So when you do recognize these patterns, again, so with the case of Sublime, uh, also on web browsers, moving from tab to tab, you can do that with a keyboard command. That can be super handy, instead of going to the mouse. Um, 
when you when you discover these keyboard commands, again, try and take them in ones and twos, maybe. Force yourself to start using them. It'll be a little awkward at first, and then they start becoming rote. And you start being the guy you see in the YouTube video, like, let me do this coding thing, and you never see. He's just, it's like move, you know, movie type music, you just go tick, 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 tick. You start becoming that person. Again, take one or two, really get them ingrained, then move on to the next one. Don't go to the Gmail uh, keyboard shortcode page, start scanning them all, like, yeah, memorizing all of these. I got this. Because half of it is mem like brain memory, and a lot of it is muscle memory. That's really when it starts, you really start going fast. So I'm going to, OK, I just need this, I need that. Same way as just going to a mouse. You'll be surprised once you start watching how many times you go to the mouse, uh, how many times you're like, geez, you know, that's just like a reflex that I'm doing that now. So there you go. OK, we've reached the end of our tips section. We're obviously on four of four. Are there any questions before we move on to the tools section? So what, what is the keyboard shortcut to go from tab to tab? I want to say it's uh, Command option, left and right. That's correct. Command option, right will go this way, and left will go that way. Uh, there was a question in this general area. Uh, keyboard shortcuts for where the WordPress are the uh, For when you're editing posts, yes. Yeah. You when you're, yeah, when you're editor window, there are. But what a great project somebody should start working on. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes? Right, so what Alicia point, is pointing out is that the right click uh, gives you a contextual menu for almost everything, and there's a lot of commands in there that you would otherwise go up to a menu for. So it, again, you're saving yourself moving the cursor up to the top, finding the right menu. Right click, again, good tip, thank you. Which, Mike. On that note, yes. on your typical Windows PC, there is a button on your keyboard which essentially is a right click. That's on a, it's on, <laughs> it's on a Windows keyboard, there's a Windows button yeah, I'm going to have to trust you on this one. I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using Windows. I just don't do it. OK, uh, so Mike's pointing out that there is a special window to do the right click on a Windows machine. Is this correct? It's like one or two buttons to the right of the space bar has three buttons. OK, it's one or two buttons to the right. OK, let's move on. Um, how are we doing on time? Left? Before you start Q and A. <sighs> okay. I've been horsing around. <laughs> and we're all gonna pay the price. Okay. <laughs> no, this will go this will go quick. Um, so we're in the tools. We already answered some of the questions, so we're good. Uh, if there's a single asterisk, that means what I'm using is a paid application. Well it's not either paid or freemium or subscription, there may be a money element. I am not shilling for any of these applications. These are all things that I have chosen to use. Uh, Double star means there might be some command line action going on. So if you're not comfortable with that, find a friend that is comfortable with command line to get them to help you. Many of the things you can set up, and once you have them set up, then you don't need to go to the command line anymore. And they become incredibly helpful, browser sync in particular. And we'll get to that, my favorite thing of all time. Um, also, with the paid applications, you always, anytime you're thinking about, like, this is a productivity app that I want to use, and there's a price associated with it, just kind of think about, because sometimes you think, like, ah, oh, 50 bucks, I don't know about that. But think about how much time it might save you. If, if you can, if the time it saves you, you can bill for four or five hours worth of work, it sounds like it's worth it. Maybe not, I don't know, it's totally up to you, but just consider that. Okay. Um, tool number zero of seven, because I don't actually use this anymore, but it's still a good tool. So for making lists, which we talked about, Wunderlist is, Wunderlist is a great one to use. Um, you can sync it between apps. I think you can sync it between people. I used to use it a lot. I don't anymore. I actually use a whiteboard now, which is behind me, uh, just for the sole purpose of having the physical satisfaction of checking something off, although this will make a noise and a ding, which is also exciting. Uh, but it also gets me out of my chair more times out of the day, which I need to do, get up and move around. You can see me using it in this. I don't know if you can see the thing moving or not. OK, dash. This one, had, tell me if you had this situation where you get on an airplane and you think, oh, I'm, this is a five hour flight. I'm going to get five billable hours done. <laughs> you start two minutes in, you think, oh, I can't remember that WordPress function. So you go to the codex and you realize, like, I don't have a Wi Fi. I can't even get to the codex. And then you realize, like, how codex dependent you are. I'm that person. I can't remember anything. 
Um, if I'm meeting you and you're telling me your name, I'm forgetting it as you're telling me. <laughs> so I need these crutches, and I, I can admit that to myself so I can move forward. Dash is great um, because it brings all these libraries offline. And it's every, every, every library I've ever wanted has been there. And for me, this is WordPress, uh, CSS, SAS, jQuery, jQuery UI. Um, what else do I have in there? Some other things you can't see. You see I'm flipping through some of them right now. So you can search. It has functions. It has methods. It has anything that you would have found in the codex is in here. But then it's all offline, which is nice. So you're not dependent on Wi-Fi. So you can work in the car on the plane and you don't get stuck like I got stuck. The other thing that's nice about Dash is it lets you make little snippets, um, which I use a lot. for. So these are like common pieces of code that I use every time. So one thing I use in WordPress uh, with almost every project is I filter out the, the pre-get posts filter. Are you familiar with this one? Have you heard about this? Have you heard about this one? It's fantastic. Um, but there's like a starting structure that you just always have to write out. And again, I would have to go to another project. Like, Geez, what project did I use that on before? Let me go get that, uh, cut and paste that. But this one actually has some modifications to it, so I got to strip that out first and then get back to that base spot. Now I can start. I wasted 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I don't know. Now I can, because I, I make like a little trigger for it with dash, I can say pre, and then I do a little um, tick mark, and then pff, code comes up for me, which I think, oh, there it is right there. And it also lets you add in like little placeholders. So there's three things you need to fill out when I'm doing that. So it, puts in the code and then puts the cursor, like you need to fill out something here and you hit return. You need to fill out something here, hit return. You can put clipboard stuff in there. It's uh, super handy. This is free, but when you have the free version, it does, makes you like, wait like eight seconds before it gives you the answer. <laughs> I know, I know, and I know I keep talking about seconds, like seconds don't matter, but they, they do add up. It's ridiculous. They shouldn't, but they do. What are we gonna, okay. Alfred, um, oh, I heard some bowls. okay. <laughs> This, uh, I think in Apple, Spotlight does pretty much the same thing now, but I've already paid for this and I'm used to using this, so I'm not going to learn a new application that does the same thing. Better than Spotlight. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not switching. Scotty B says better than Spotlight, <laughs> so you know it's true. Girl, you know it's true. <laughs> Which is an old reference. Um, so what Alfred does is it helps you keep your hands on the keyboard and not go to the mouse. So you, with Alfred, you can set up a trigger to bring up Alfred. And mine is command space, which is an easy thing for me to do. And then it says, what do you want to do? And with Alfred, I can search for files. I can open applications. I can set up little workflows. That part you do have to pay for extra. And the people that develop it are British, so you have to pay in pounds. So that can be exciting. <laughs> Except that you see, like, it's only 17 pounds. That's totally worth it. And then you see on PayPal that it was 28 bucks. Like, hey. <laughs> but that's how finance works, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, so you can see here I'm uh, opening Sublime. Um, you can set up, so I set up uh, when I start coding, there's five things I always have to open. I open Sublime, I open Dash, uh, I open Tower to manage the Git repository. I open MAMP, which I know I should be using Vagrant, but I don't yet. It's another thing to learn. I'm getting there. And one of the one I can't think of. But I set up a little workflow. So I go into Alfred and I type work. And it opens all five of those apps for me. So I don't have to go click, 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 click. I don't even have to go to the mouse. It's awesome. Um, and again, this one's Apple only, so I apologize for PC folk. Mike, sorry, buddy. I don't know. I'm sure there's something like this for PC. Um, Oh. Oh, I also wanted to think. So uh, the little thumbs up that's up there, these are the people who showed me these things. So this one was Brandon, but I think John Hawkins showed this to Brandon. So thank you to John Hawkins also. Um, Emmett, thank you to Jaffe Worley. What Emmett does is it shorthands uh, HTML and CSS markup. So this when you're this is especially great when you're prototyping, and this is really only useful for front-end developers, so I apologize for back-end developers. <laughs> But if I know I'm building a certain structure, I need, I need a div, I need an unordered list with five things in it, with links inside each of those list items, and then I need two paragraphs after that. Normally, you'd kind of start typing it out, kind of cut and paste in a little bit. But with Emmet, there is like, just like a string you can type out. And I say, you type div. And then uh, you can do siblings and children and stuff like that. And uh, essentially, you want to go to emmet.io and they have some cool videos of this happening. But essentially, you, you type out this quick little string, hit tab, all that markup appears. And you can see that's kind of what's happening right here. What I did in this video here is um, a, I would 
type something out, hit tab, you see what happens, and I would command Z, so I'd go back, and I'm just kind of making it more and more complex as it goes along. But again, huge time saver because I'm not going and cutting and pasting, and I'm staying on the keyboard, stuff like that. With coding, again, coding is the source of what a lot of us are doing. So those bits of code that you use all the time, do not go and grab them from an old project, as I've already described. Put them in GitHub, put them in Gist. Um, CodePen's good for prototyping. Uh, JS Fiddle, if you don't like uh, CodePen, although I do co prefer CodePen because I think you, that one, you don't have to press the refresh button to get the code to re-render. Um, Yeoman, which is a newer one and a little bit more abstract, but Yeoman gets you to a starting point a lot faster. Um, so for example, to say you're starting a WordPress project, it's a WordPress.org pro project that we all do. And normally we go to WordPress.org, we download the code, we put it locally, we FTP it up. This is taking a lot of time. This takes a little bit of command line business, but you can command line into a folder and say, yo's the command for yeoman. You say, yo, WordPress. And there's a, somebody built a thing that goes, gets WordPress, unzips it, put it in this folder for you. But you just say, yo, WordPress. It takes two seconds. You don't have to go and download anything. It's super fast. There is a learning curve on that one. I do apologize. It'll take a bit. Uh, Bauer, similar. Um, it, uh, again, this is a little more abstract, but it kind of manages third-party applications or uh, foundations or structures that you put in like a GitHub repo. For example, um, uh, Jacob, who I mentioned on Bauer, uh, he and the team at Zeek Interactive do a modified version of the underscores theme, which I enjoy a great deal. It, it marries uh, underscores and foundation together. So they use foundation, they use modernizer, um, a couple jQuery UI scripts in there as well. The foundation modernizer and those jQuery UI scripts are not anything that need to be managed in their repository because they're managed elsewhere. So with Bower, they just kind of include a Bower command in the project saying, this project also uses these other things, so just go and get them. And again, it's a way for you to not have to track that on your own. This is more um, just, again, time-saving things. If you get to that point, you're actually a pretty good coder if you are at this point, I think or at least that's what I aspire to be at, so I'm, I'm sure wherever the next level you think is like, ah, that's where I want to get, and that's where I want to get to. All right. Okay, so this is the best one. Browser Sync. If you're a front-end developer, you have to be using this. Um, who is using Browser Sync? Oh, crime in Italy. Okay. Are we using, um, that's something my grandpa said, I don't know. Uh, live Reload? OK, some, some tepid yeses. I'll take it. So imagine Live Reload, which for those of you who are unfamiliar with other of things, uh, Live Reload will, when you change a file, like a CSS file, it'll reload the browser for you with those new styles, which sounds awesome. And for a long time, that was awesome. So again, saving yourself the time from going to the mouse, hitting the reload, or doing Command R. Saving time is great. But Browser Sync goes to a whole different level. So Browser Sync doesn't. It doesn't even reload the page. It actually injects the new code right into the browser, so there's no latency. You're not waiting for the reload to happen. But it's not just CSS. It'll do it, like if you change a PHP page, it'll refresh. If you change a JavaScript page, it'll refresh. And you can, you can tell how much or how little of this you want it to do. More importantly, and you can see what I'm doing here, I have a phone simulator and a browser going at the same time. So I'm working on a responsive theme. So I can see how both. Um, both the phone and the, the desktop are reacting to the same changes that I'm making. And this is, you can do it offline as well. So you, if you're on a Wi-Fi, I could have a phone that's independent of this. I could have my tablet over here, and I could see as many devices as I want. So I could have a tablet that's horizontal and one that's portrait, although I know that's portrait and that's horizontal. Um, and again, so every, every code change you make, you see how it affects everything across the board, and you stop hitting those snags of I made this one change, looks great here because that's where they reported the bug. But changing the desktop one screwed up the mobile one. You didn't notice that. You tell the client it's all done. He says, no, you're not done. You get a little bit embarrassed because you're supposed to be better than that. <laughs> um, this will take a little bit of command line action too. Although for a good example, do go to the Zeke Interactive um, Heisenberg theme. And Jacob Arioli has a very good uh, gulp script that does do this browser sync. And I think Arsino helped with that as well. Yeah, yeah he did. That's uh, one of the smartest guys I know. Um, nice. No, no, no. Surprisingly, <laughs> frighteningly, 
brilliant. No, good guy, very smart. Um, let's move on. I could talk about him forever, and I should, because he's so smart. OK. This bit, I know we're on 507. This is the, kind of the end of like the coding stuff that, that helps me speed up my life. There are, I mentioned in my little write-up that were two little business things I do, and I, we sort of have time, so I'm going to go over them real quick. Uh, one is Harvest, which I use for time tracking and invoicing, or we use at PixelJar for time tracking and invoicing. The two things that were huge about this is one, you can start tracking your time, and you become very aware of where your time is spent. And more importantly, you also notice, like I'm tracking time on this project, and then I started goofing off, so I stopped the timer. You get to the end of eight days, and you've tracked two hours. You're like, oh, man. OK, I need to improve that, too. So that's good. So you become aware of that. You can start course correcting your life. Um, number two, uh, it does invoicing, but more importantly, it will follow up for you. So if you're doing invoices as a PDF or something like that, you send out a PDF, it's due on a certain date. You have to remember that, and then you have to email the client to let them know they didn't pay you on time. Hopefully they did. They probably didn't. You can set up in Harvest to say, hey, as soon as this hits a due date, email that guy again with this different email and say, hey, brother, you owe me some money. <laughs> if he waits two more days, send him another email. And then every five days after that, keep sending him emails until he sends me my money. <laughs> right? It's good. You can also hook up uh, Harvest to Stripe for quicker payments, which is nice. And you can hook up to PayPal and stuff like that, which it's uh, surprising how many people pay a lot quicker when you make it easier for them to pay. Again, making other people's lives easier is what we're here for, and make your life easier as well. So Harvest, and then we use BidSketch, uh, thank you, John Hawkins, for creating our proposals. The two things that are great about this is one, proposals tend to have a, a similar structure. Obviously, you tailor it to each project individually and each client individually, but there's certain kind of boilerplate starting points you have, and you can kind of develop those within BidSketch, and you can Lego those pieces together and say, this is what we need for this particular project which is great, and you can send it out. Uh, your lead comes back with some changes, like here's some things that we wanted different, cool. You can just edit them, send it back again, and then the coup de grace is you can sign it electronically, they can sign it electronically. There's no print out a PDF. He mails you the PDF, which they still do sometimes, and you get shocked, but that's what happens. And that's why you're helping them in the digital age. I'm talking about clients. Um, also, this is also incredibly important. When you're working on bid sketch and harvest, be sure to have a, a uh, talented barista make you a really nice coffee to set next to your computer. <laughs> right? It's crucial to business success. Um, yeah, but so again, getting that electronic signature makes the, the proposal closing process so much faster for us. OK. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Zinn. Sometimes I have a beard, sometimes I don't, and that can confuse people, so you get to see both. Uh, the, um, if you want to submit a review of me, which you're more than welcome to, I'd be curious to see what happened. I don't remember most of this already. Again, no retention. Um, also, the thumbs up icon, I have to thank uh, Yamini that I got off the Noun project. If you haven't used the Noun Project, also a great uh, resource for getting icons and whatnot. It's a cool one. Some are paid. The rights management, you have to kind of sift through, but whatnot. Robert, did you have a question? Uh, question about Harvest. Do you know yes. Does it do recurring billing that you might not be putting yes. time in? Yes. Yeah, so Harvest, you can do recurring billing. So if you have a retainer client that you know every month you send out the same invoice, you can set that up. So you don't have to make that invoice anymore. You can also do, it does retainers too, so you can take money out of a retainer when you send an invoice out, which is nice. It actually does a lot of cool stuff. Again, it's a cost thing, but the amount of time it saves us is incredible. And again, the amount, the, the speed in which we get paid for the projects uh, went up, which we did not expect. Uh, are there any other questions? We're in question phase now, Alicia. Okay. Okay, so so is it kind of like uh, uh, like expose where it opens the but but you're so uh, what she's saying is there's an application called which w i t h w i t c h w i t c h yeah not with obviously <laughs> which um, Many tricks is the name of the company, and it'll help you. It'll give you a way to contextually choose an application window that's open. 
That sounds awesome, because what I use is that command tab, which you have to kind of remember, well, which one did I want? And that sounds a little bit better. And I work on someone else's laptop, and I don't have that. Oh, OK, yeah, so that's actually a great point that Alicia makes is when you get used to all these uh, new keyboard commands and things that you do, as soon as you use somebody else's computer, it will not work anything like yours anymore. <laughs> and that is one of the prices that you have to pay to being uh, faster at production. Yes, sir? Me? Uh, yeah. Um, have you ever tried using a software called Coda? Yes, uh, Coda is a text editing software. Uh, I did use that before I went to Sublime. What I liked about that one in particular was that it would remember the files that you changed and FTP those automatically up for you. Uh, but in snippets and everything else in there too. Yeah, it does a lot of great things. It's made by the same people that do Transport, which is a great FTP client as well. Um, the the reason I switched to Sublime in particular was for one very particular reason. Uh, in Sublime. If you hit Command D and you're, you hide it, highlight it a bit, so you need to change a prefix of a function from something to something else. But you know you use that all over the place. You can hit Command D and it'll get all those places where you use that bit of text. And you edit it once and it'll edit it all over the place. And that, so that mass editing, I loved it. And we'd kind of stopped using FTP, which I really liked Coda for. And we started using GitHub for deployments and pushing. Okay. So I still think it's a great uh, text client, uh, and I would certainly recommend it. It's just not the one that I use in particular. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that'll, sorry. That'll be the last one. Okay. You get the make it a good one. This is important. I wanted to ask if you use two the, the things out there. Sure. Um, 17 hats is something that I've been hearing about, and it does all the invoicing, time tracking. It's kind of like the combination of Harvest and what was the other one? BidSketch. And BidSketch. Yeah, it does proposals and contracts and all this. OK. Stuff. Have you used So used yeah, she's asking me if, if I've heard of 17 hats, yeah. which apparently is a combination of Harvest and BidSketch, which is what I'm showing. And I have not, but that sounds incredible. Again, one tool instead of two is great. And then um, if then, then that? If then, then that, which is great, and Zapier does something similar. Uh, these are two things that will help you set up um, triggers and automations. So like, if I get an email and it has this word in the subject, tweet it out. Or I know it's a terrible example, but it, it set up, sets up these combinations of things. Um, yes, so um, we use Zapier more often than if this and that, but that's still, it's a great resource for sure, especially for setting up, again, automation. So what you're doing is you're trying to, there's something that you notice, again, this is recognizing these patterns. So when I get this email, I take a while to file it, set up a trigger so it files itself. So great one, thank you. And I apologize, I am out of time, so if you have more questions, I'll be outside in the heat or something. And I also want to say this gentleman over here has the best shirt ever. You, dude. Yeah, thank you.